Thursday, May 11th, 2017, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So this is an early uh, market update. It's uh, just before 9 a.m. London or 4 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, the main uh, headline, uh, I would say, or the main move this morning is still uh, Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin right now trading at 1853, so 1853. It's just a run a runaway train. Um, it's getting bubbly, but it keeps going. It's like you can't stop it. Uh, the other cryptocurrencies are not doing as well this morning. Ethereum, for example, is basically unchanged at 89.72. Uh, Ripple is down 6.6%. Uh, Dash is down 7.32%. So yeah, Bitcoin just keeps going. Uh, no stopping it for now. Uh, but I would be cautious. Uh, you know, I would be taking maybe a little bit off the table here, unless you want to keep it for the long term. Uh, it could very easily drop $200, $300. Uh, even more. We've come up so much in Bitcoin that I'm not surprised uh, to see a big move down, but we could still go up. So it's really uh, crazy. Um, in terms of the other uh, more mature markets, uh, you know, don't forget cryptocurrencies haven't been around that much. Bitcoin is not even 10 years old. Uh, very few people know about cryptocurrencies or Bitcoins. Um, so, yeah, it's exciting, but uh, I would caution people about it. Don't go crazy. Uh, what else? Um, well, back to the uh, main, uh, you know, main more mature markets. Gold this morning still languishing, uh, twelve twenty one up two dollars. Uh, silver 16.28 up 10 cents, but very disappointing move uh, in gold and silver. S you know, especially looking at the uh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, seeing that they are alternative currencies, and so so is gold and silver. But the main difference is that gold and silver, uh, you know, especially gold, is managed by the the people who run the financial system, the central banks, the bullion banks. They've got an interest in managing the price of gold. It's not even like keeping it down because, you know, since 1971, gold's gone from $35 an ounce to $12.21. So in the long term, they can't keep the price down because it's a finite, uh, uh, rare, you know, element, uh, unlike fiat money, which you can create out of thin air. I actually think the way they control the market is to make it... Uh, volatile to make it uh, so people don't <clears throat> excuse me don't want to uh, you know the average Joe on the street doesn't want to uh, put his money into gold because you know all the mainstream media and also the uh, mainstream financial press <clears throat> they look at gold as uh, something that you know you should ignore even, you know, like in the UK, I saw an article a few weeks ago in the Daily Mail and uh, in the financial section, and they, they were advising to buy gold, uh, actually, but they said, oh, you shouldn't buy uh, coins or bars. It's too, it's not really an investment. It's not the thing to do. You should buy ETFs or you should buy, you know, uh, mutual funds that invest in mining stocks. So even when they uh, try to advise people, they say, oh, don't do that. You know, it's uh, don't buy physical gold. So that's the reason why, you know, precious metals uh, look really fr it looks frustrating compared, compared to uh, especially what uh, Bitcoin is doing, you know, uh, about, yeah, a month ago, I think uh, Bitcoin was below gold. Gold was almost at 1300 and Bitcoin had traded below 1000 And now here we are, and Bitcoin is almost at 1900 So uh, what else is going on? Well, the Dow uh, is down 26, the Dow future at 20912 
looking at the chart, uh, I was looking at the chart of the S&P earlier today. And basically, you know, we we have made a new all time high recently on a monthly basis, but we need to close above 2400 for the month of May, for example, to break the February high closing high. So we're still like uh, kind of uh, moving to around the top level where there's not much momentum in the stock market, in my opinion, at the moment. At a longer term chart, like monthly charts going back to 2000, S&P chart looks very bullish. So I don't know. Uh, are we going to continue to see the stock market go up? I And if we do, I don't really think it's a signal of, um, you know, it's just a signal that the central banks are completely rigging the financial markets because the economies are not doing well. We all know that... Uh, you know, the unemployment rates, uh, the GDP rates, even if they're weak, uh, if GDP was weak in the first quarter, they're all like uh, doctored uh, because governments, you know, they, they use a measurement of prices called CPI, which have been, you know, if you go back to uh, the way they calculated it 20, 30 years ago, uh, CPI should be a lot higher than, you know, 2%. It should be more like 5 or 6 and that's why, you know, the cost of living is going up for the uh, average person, you know, for the public, uh, for the very wealthy, you know, it's going up as well, but it doesn't matter as much because their financial assets are inflating and uh, they're doing well. Uh, what else? Uh, I want to, well, let's see, the currencies this morning are fairly steady. One currency that I think is in interesting uh, to keep an eye on is the yen the dollar versus the yen, because that's kind of uh, affecting uh, the gold price right now. The dollar has rebounded uh, quite a lot since April 17th from like 108. We're now 114.20. So uh, still quite strong. We need to see the dollar drop against the yen to see gold starting to rebound. Um, if the dollar keeps going up against the yen, it's going to Keep the pressure on the price of gold, in my opinion. Uh, pound is very steady this week. Hasn't really moved too much. It's 129.30 this morning. Uh, it's uh, unchanged, basically. Uh, the euro is 108.88, up 20 uh, pips, uh, but not much uh, movement there either. One thing I've noticed uh, is the bond markets, uh, especially the U.S. Treasury market, the reason why I talk about U.S. treasuries or not not gilts or uh, bunds in Germany is because it's the benchmark uh, government bonds because, you know, the U.S. dollar or Federal Reserve note is still the reserve currency of the world. But I've noticed that 10-year yields have crept up. Uh, we're at 240 now, so that means bond prices are going down. And uh, it looks like 230 is a support in terms of yield. Uh, we did get below that level earlier um, a few weeks ago, but now it's creeping back up. The key resistance in terms of yield, the 10-year yield, is 263. On the month, yields are up 11 basis points. Uh, on the year, 10-year yield is up 67. The UK uh, gilts, uh, very subdued in terms of yield. Uh, the two-year yield in the gilt yield is... Only 0.14%, uh, the five-year gilt 0.59, and the 10-year is 118. And they're all, you know, the gilt yields are all down in the last year. You know, that's not a sign uh, of a very strong economy. I know these markets are heavily manipulated by the Bank of England. Personally, I think UK yields should be, you know, in almost in the double digits because this country, the UK, has, you know, unsurmountable debts. The economy is not doing great. The only reason why they've been able to keep these yields down is because they're part of the club, the Bank of England, the UK Treasury. They're part of the Bank for International Settlements Club with the US Treasury. Uh, you know, the, the Fed, the ECB, mainly the Western European countries and the Americans, they, they run the system so they can manipulate uh, their rates lower 
Uh, they can keep their currencies, you know, kind of pegged almost. But countries like, for example, Brazil has a much smaller national debt than the UK. Their 10-year, uh, you know, government bond yields are more than 10%. It doesn't make sense. I know the Brazilian economy is slow, but uh, that's uh, an interesting thing. Uh, I think what's happening in the UK is called financial repression. Uh, you know, they're punishing savers. You know, you get nothing for your money for saving. 30-year uh, yield is less than 2%, 10-year 1.18. So they're trying to get people to spend money. Uh, and they're trying to also keep the cost of uh, borrowing for the government low because unlike, uh, you know, Michael Fallon, who's the Minister of Defense, you know, Department of Defense in the UK, he came out on the radio today and said that the UK government is running a balanced budget. Wow, what a big uh, pack of, uh, I don't want to say, yeah, it, it's basically uh, not true because we've been running uh, budget deficits every year since the Tories came to power and we are also running budget deficits under labor after the financial crisis. Um, and I can't believe he came out and said uh, we we're running a balanced budget. And I'd also like to point out, because in the UK, people get confused. They say, they talk about the national deficit as if the deficit was the national debt. There's a difference. The deficit is basically the overdraft that the government runs every year. And at the end of that year, that overdraft turns is turned into debt. They have to finance it because they can't pay it off the overdraft. So it becomes it gets added to the national debt. So there's a difference. But the UK has been running deficits uh, for 10 years now. Um, and I don't think, uh, you know, the last budget they came out with, they don't even see the deficit being balanced by 2020. In 2010-11, they said the budget deficit would be balanced by 2015. They're still running a deficit. So that means the debt is increasing and, and the UK debt as well. If you if you Google UK national debt or UK debt clock, you will see that it's around 1.7 trillion pounds, just below 100% uh, of GDP. But there is an asterisk, asterisk uh, below that uh, saying, you know, that that's not including the 500 billion plus the, the government used to... Uh, uh, bail out the banks in 2008 2009 so if you add 500 billion our national debt is over 2 trillion 2.2 trillion and it's probably even more so um yeah that's a little bit about the deficit and the debt and the difference between because it's very important because if people think that the national uh, debt is actually a national deficit when the budget gets balanced to you know uh 0% of GDP, you know, balance their budget, the government is going to come out, oh, we balance the national deficit. And people will think that uh, there's no debt problem. So that's why we need to understand the big, the difference. So, um, yeah, uh, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up, share it far and wide. And, uh, if you like to donate, I would really appreciate it. There's some links below in the description. Uh, I've got PayPal account. I accept Bitcoin. And uh, I've got a Patreon account as well. So I'll talk to you later. Uh, take care. Bye.